In this video, I want to practice some Grignard reactions, look at some conditions, and see if we can get to predicting products, proposing mechanisms, uh, that sort of thing. So, our notes in front of us, let's go ahead and just take a look at a potential Grignard reaction. What if I handed you a question that said, Let's take this plus this. We have an arrow. We have a question mark. Predict the products. And then for the conditions of the reaction, I said Mg0 carbonyl 3H plus workup. And I said solvent was equal to this molecule. Okay, what would I want you to do? How would I want you to approach this problem? First of all, I would want you to recognize it's a Grignard reaction. So it's a Grignard reaction and the clue there is Mg0. We don't need to, I didn't, you know, this is another reaction of a halo alkane, I guess, but I didn't feel it was necessary to go and um, add this to that table of reactivity for SN1, SN2, E2, E1, that sort of thing. Um, because it's pretty clear if you have magnesium zero, you're going to be doing a Grignard reaction and nothing else. Okay, so recognize it's a Grignard reaction with Mg zero. Number two, find, I would say this, I would say, Draw the Grignard reagent which is step one and then find the carbonyl. Okay, so let's do those things. So the carbonyl is part of step two. So the Grignard reagent. That's going to result from the halo alkane reacting with magnesium zero to form this new carbon bonded to magnesium system. And again, this is one of my favorite parts. We take our halo alkane that is hugely electrophilic at carbon and react it with magnesium zero such that magnesium zero adds to the carbon bromine bond, inserts itself in between the two. You just draw magnesium now uh, sitting inside of the carbon magnesium or carbon bromine bond. What that does is that renders this basically the same as a salt. Now it's not as salt-like as sodium chloride, but as a result, what you could do is if you have this molecule, you could go ahead and cross out all of this. Now you need to include this bond in there as well to give rise to this. Okay, so don't forget the bond. I should, I'm just gonna put a, a knot here. It's not this. So we're gonna cross that out. Okay, so it's not that, it is instead this carbanion, carbon-based anion. Okay, so we've drawn the Grignard reagent and the nucleophile. I think it's helpful to draw the nucleophile, especially as you're getting started. That's the equivalent of R minus. Now, what's truly in the system, if somebody really, you know, uh, put me up to it and said, hey, what's really going on here? Yes, it's the magnesium bonded system. There's some covalent character. The magnesium actually coordinates to the carbonyl oxygen to facilitate addition. But for now, what we're worried about, I think it's helpful to just draw R minus, just um, remove the magnesium, the bromine, the bond for, between carbon and magnesium and add a negative charge instead. Okay, so that's the Grignard reagent. Let's find the carbonyl now for step two. Find the carbonyl. In this case, it is this molecule. Turns out that's acid aldehyde, the hangover molecule. We'll talk about that in some upcoming lectures on alcohol oxidation. Anyway, so we have our carbonyl. Then what we should do is add R minus to the carbonyl. There's a few ways you could approach this. So we could have R minus, which is this molecule. We went through that on the previous page of notes. 
and we could add that directly to our carbonyl using two arrows. One arrow shows the negative charge attacking the carbonyl carbon, pushing the electrons up and onto the oxygen atom to get a lone pair of electrons on that oxygen atom. Okay, so here are my atoms from the carbonyl with a negative charge on the oxygen. Maybe what I'll do is I'll put a star here next to the carbonyl carbon. Then what I'm going to do is draw a new bond. That new bond could be black, but I'm trying to emphasize it for you. The new bond is what connects the parts from our R minus, which is no longer negatively charged to the carbonyl carbon. Okay, if you want to count carbons, you could be like one, two, three, four, five. We have those exact same carbon atoms present. So the negative charge has attacked the carbonyl, pushed the electrons up and onto the oxygen so as to avoid exceeding the octet rule on the carbon atom. Alternatively, we could consider a resonance structure of our carbonyl, where the negative charge is now localized on the oxygen atom as a new lone pair of electrons. That's gonna leave behind a hole or a positive charge on the carbon atom. These are resonance structures of each other. And what we can do is just add our nucleophile to the positive charge. I'm gonna flip my nucleophile around so it's not so awkward in the final structure. The negative charge engages the positive charge and that's all you have to do because in the first step by depicting the resonance structure, you already boosted the electrons from being between the carbon and the oxygen to being fixed on the oxygen atom. After you combine those together, you get the exact same alkoxide product with the exact same new CC bond. New CC bonds are sometimes tough to draw and that's because we go to great lengths to avoid having to draw so much detail, making drawing molecules more efficient by cutting out C's and H's. Now that does make it sometimes hard, especially in the beginning, to see the formation of new carbon-carbon bonds. It's very common for me to notice that students will uh, add carbons, accidentally delete carbons. So make sure your carbon counts the same. That's why I counted my carbons five in the starting uh, on the left side of the equation, five at the right side of the equation. Okay. So, and then in step three, we're going to neutralize the O minus with our H plus as part of the quench slash workup. Okay, <clears throat> these are acid base arrows. We've drawn more complicated arrows in the past. I'm not saying this is easy, just saying it's not the hardest part of the mechanism, nor is it anywhere near the hardest mechanism you've seen. We have an H plus in proximity with a negative charge. The negative always attacks the positive, not the opposite. And then we get hydrogen now on the oxygen atom. We have neutralized our molecule. We've made an ROH, which is our alcohol product. Maybe we should consider one more example. Maybe we do a structurally complex carbonyl and a simpler, just trying to think, what could I draw to trip us up? Because people like to be tripped up during lecture when the stakes are low. Well, let's go ahead and draw This molecule plus um, let's just go ahead with this. That's fine. Okay. So we want to know what happens in this reaction if we add Mg0 and then we add our carbonyl and then we have H plus quench to, to uh, quench the reaction's thirst for protons, I guess all using diethyl ether as the solvent. So to figure this out, I'm gonna first draw my Grignard reagent. And that's going to be this molecule where instead of a bromine, we have a direct bond to magnesium and then there's bromine up above. Or I can erase the covalent bond to the magnesium and replace it with a negative charge because it kind of acts like a salt and it kind of acts like it's dissociated in solution. So this is my R minus. One, two, three, four carbons. 
one, two, three, four carbons in the starting halo alkane. Okay, so our carbonyl, we've done step one, which is form our Grignard reagent. Our carbonyl is this, which could also be drawn as a resonance structure where we put the electrons onto the electronegative oxygen atom leaving behind a positive charge in the carbon atom. We haven't actually done any chemistry at this point to the carbonyl. We've just redrawn an alternative depiction, a different way of thinking about it that takes advantage of the fact that we don't get all of our, um, we, don't, we don't have, we're not able to fully depict the molecule in a single bond line structure. Okay, when we have our carbonyl drawn, we can add that to our R minus by letting the negative add to the positive so we have a six membered ring with a one, two, three, four carbon chain hanging off of it. And that's going to look like O minus, I just redraw my carbonyl. One, two, three, four, right? One, two, three, four. Okay, so that's a common situation where I would see people um, actually deleting carbons more often. Okay, now this negative charge can react with H plus to give us our final product. I wanna show one more example, and this is an oddball example. This is called an intramolecular Grignard reaction. And this was step three, I should add. So the intramolecular, kind of like intrapersonal, communication versus interpersonal. I don't know why I go to that, um, that analogy, but kind of like that, what we see here is intramolecular means within the molecule. This is just another run of the mill Grignard reaction, except what's different is the halogen and the carbonyl are on the same molecule. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw this and then we'll go on to We'll go on to the next page to figure it out. What I do in this case is number one, I add magnesium zero. Number two, this is, you know, just to keep the conditions the same carbonyl, but that gets a star. This is a bit awkward, H plus quench. So we're gonna do the exact same reaction in diethyl ether, except now the halogen and the carbonyl are part of the same molecule. So let's go on to the next page and practice this one. Okay, so I see, how many do I have? I, I end down, yep. I see that um, I have a halogen. So if I wanted to draw the Grignard reagent by reacting with Mg0, this would be my molecule. And this would be my R minus. So truly it's bound to MGBR, but um, it's helpful to think about it as R minus. Just make sure to delete the bond between carbon and magnesium when you do this. Now, the other thing that's odd about this is this is our carbonyl. Our carbonyl is on our R minus. So let's go ahead and draw that. I'm gonna do the double headed resonance arrows. I'm gonna draw that as the charge separated species. Okay. Now in any other Grignard reaction, we just let R minus find um, C plus. Now in this case, we're going to see an intramolecular or within the molecule attack where the negative combines with the positive charge. Now, how do we draw that? It's gonna be like a weird line right let's we could we could give it a shot so i think the trick here is to make this longer and then we get to something like this Whew, that looks rough well let's just recognize that one two three four five right one two three four five i guess i guess is how i counted it okay so the atoms all match up there well, it's just a five-membered molecule or arrangement of carbon atoms 
where the end of the chain is connected to the start of the chain, this is just a ring. And it's a ring with five atoms. And so what we could do is redraw this as a five membered ring with an O minus. And then at carbon one, if this goes two, three, uh, four, five, at carbon one, there's also a CH3. Maybe I'll emphasize that now in the final depiction. And then we let that react with H plus to give us this molecule. Okay, so we have an intramolecular event where the intramolecular nucleophile electrophile combine. Okay, so intramolecular from within the same molecule as opposed to intermolecular or bimolecular where we have two separate molecules colliding and combining. The reaction happens within itself and this happens when the carbonyl is attached to the same molecule that has the halogen. Okay, so that was, um, those were some examples of Grignard reactions. There's more in the discussion problem sets, run through those, practice, let me know if you have questions. The conditions won't change. Um, magnesium zero tells you we've got a Grignard reaction and that'll be a big part of this learning module.